everyone. It's Diane with Sobatique, and today is Fabric Friday, and our topic is canvas. I wanted to finish our week with some follow-up, some finishings, and a little tutorial. This week has been so much fun talking about the canvas and um, the market bag uh, downloadable pattern was an amazing success. So I hope you guys um, either have fabric that you're going to try making that pattern with um, or have purchased some of our canvas to do a little market bag or whatever you're going to do with all that fabric. So I really, first of all, want to thank you all for your response to the canvas itself and all of your questions and comments and um, calls for coordinating fabric. I really have a lot to follow up on, which is to add a few things to our website to help with those fabric coordinations and how to plan out some of the by any bag patterns and noodle head patterns when um, you wanna use canvas instead of cotton. Because all of our um, handbag and accessory bag project kits on our website right now are all cotton. So they're all taken from our 115 inch wide collection of cotton and its coordinates. Um, and so it will take a little bit of time to get more of our canvas fabrics out there with the project kit. So I've got some ideas on how to make it a little bit easier for you to select what you want and how to add all the, the mesh, the um, foldover elastic, the hardware, the snaps, the magnets, the everything, just to make it more, I guess, kittable for you. And so stay tuned for that. But I have a question for you all. And I really would love to know if you could just kind of give me some comments below. Um, I've really had some kind of questions about whether or not the canvas is too heavy to work with when it comes to some of the components of the bag. For example, here's, here's my thought. Do we only put the canvas as the outside main fabric of the bag because that's really the durable uh, portion that we wanna have? And then the lining and the coordinate would be cotton coordinates because we, we design everything to be a coordinate regardless of base cloth. So our cotton works with our rayon, which works with our jersey, whatever it happens to be, um, we have coordinates that, and then I think that's what makes us a little special is that we have these coordinates that we can put into a mix and match bag or, and that's the topic, so the bag. Or what I really loved about this is the, um, Got Your Back bag by Annie. And I used, as you probably know, I used the main fabric here is our canvas. And this is the Medora Flora Delft. I also, because of the durability, used the canvas. This is the hand dyed Delft, which matches um, from the canvas because I wanted it to be strong and all of what really you want to use canvas for. However, in the Biani patterns, the coordinate is also used as your binding and some other features that are in the bag. But the cotton, I did use cotton for my lining. And so I coordinated that with our 115 inch wide fabric. And this happens to be Phoenix um, Clifton Garden. So that's my dilemma. Do we make it so flexible so you can pick your canvas plus cotton or how do we do this so i need your help and i need your response and even if you want to give me a phone call or chat on our website do that because it really kind of helps us out i really want your opinions i believe that there are a few adjustments we can make to um the pattern to work with the canvas First of all, as the binding, remember last week's Fabric Friday where I tested out how to bind with the um, canvas and it worked, it really worked. And I didn't have any difficulty binding with the canvas here 
except for one thing. And you will hear this also on the tutorial for how to make this bag from start to finish. Um, but I want to share that with you here. And I'm just going to set this aside for, for just a second. The, the binding itself on the pockets, where there is straight binding, there's no issue with canvas at all. Where there is a curve, okay, so here on the front of the bag, we have a flap, which is a single layer, and then across here, straight binding. And those are part of the pattern pieces for the bag. The curve binding up here is not. So in the initial instructions, I think for all of the Annie bags, at least I'm gonna talk about that, um, wherever there is a curve with single layer fabric, quilted fabric, we can use a two inch bias binding. No question. The instructions in this particular bag are for a two and a quarter inch bias binding throughout the inside of the bag. Okay, so you would cut your 18 inch square into two and a quarter inch strips, sew the strips together, and you have your binding. I found that where there is a, just a little bit of, of um, bulk, like the two layers of quilted fabric, the two and a quarter works fine. When we get down to the sides of the bag and we're working with, I would say the height of the layers becomes a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. And there's various techni techniques to use to really flatten that um, soft and stable and all of your layers. Use a hammer. It's really, it, seriously, it might sound kind of crazy, but um, it works. And it is a great way to smush everything together. And so I did find it quite um, tight on the two and a quarter to get the binding around to the other side to top stitch the binding in place. So make it easier on yourself and just use two and a half inch bias binding strips when you're working with our canvas. When it's cotton, it's thinner. It will um, wrap easier as expected when you're working with the bag pattern. Um, but the canvas, when you switch up your base cloth, when you switch up your um, expected, like even if you were going to use a leather or something else, you have to change the width of the binding. And so that was a lesson learned. So two and a half inch strips will get you a really, really great binding when you're working with canvas. What I would like to do is to offer our kits where you get the choice of the fabrics that you want in them, whether they be cotton or canvas. The issue is all the pricing stuff that I have to come up with because they're not the same price and they're not the same width. So we'll figure all that out. I just need your input. <laughs> and um, look for on our YouTube channel as well, the entire how to stitch up this backpack, which um, I really, really absolutely love. And I learned a lot along the way as well. So, okay, so that is sewing, quilting, and etc. with our um, canvas. The second part of what I want to do here on this Fabric Friday is a little special tutorial. Um, I had a lot of requests over the last couple of days, um, purely because also of the volume of downloads for the market bag. Um, I'm gonna do a quick tutorial on how to make the market bag. So if there were any questions in my pattern, um, it'll clarify any of that. And just also, uh, that was a first draft. I really wanted to get it out there because one of my friends called Rodney and said, um, we need that, that pattern. I really want that pattern, that market bag pattern. And so I whipped it up as fast as I could. And there may be some issues with it or whatever, but let me know too if you find mistakes and I'll update it and we'll, we'll keep it going out there. Because the other thing I want to do is I want to add um, a version where we're adding pockets to it and we add a snap to it. And I want to just get all that into a really, really nice 
pattern for you all to just have as a download. But let's get going. I really want to talk about the market bag, take you through the step-by-step, -step, and um, we'll wrap it up in a minute. Okay, so I hope that tutorial um, on how to make the market bag wasn't so overly long. I am uh, trying to be a little bit more concise on my instructions, and so hopefully we're getting better on that. But here is the first market bag that I made, and here is the second made from the complementary fabrics, or the two sets of fabrics. So, so basically from... Uh, two coordinating fabrics, three-fourths of a yard each, we will make two market bags where the main fabric here becomes the handles, and I know I was calling them straps the whole time, <laughs> straps, um, and the base of the second bag, and the main fabric of the second bag is the straps and the base of the other bag. So here we have two beautiful bags and out of three-fourths of a yard of two fabrics, two canvas fabrics. And um, the one thing that I did notice on this time, this version of it is um, I'm so used to sewing with the, the quilted fabric that I'm always using a 90-14 needle, top stitch needle, when working with the canvas. But when you're only working with one layer of the canvas, you don't need that strength. So we can work with a 12 instead. So an 80-12 is just fine as well. So if you have that, definitely use that. That was the only other point that I wanted to make. So, um, but yeah, um, there you are. Now the pattern, if you have not downloaded it, please do. It's a free downloaded pattern. You'll get the link in our description below. Jump over to the website, add it to your cart, download it. Um, and we have added a kit. Late, better late than never, but we also added a kit to our um, um, product offerings for the market bag. So all you need to do is within the canvas selections, find your two favorite fabrics, and list those in the kit. You'll see where it says, you know, list the fabrics that you would like. And so for example, this is Phoenix Twilight Blue and Hand Dyed Twilight Blue. Just simply put that, I'll know that it's canvas. And then you're gonna get the uh, pattern, which is a download pattern, and you'll get needles, top stitch needles, 90, 14 so that you always have them when you're working with bulkier uh, canvas projects as well. I want to just add that to the grouping. So the kit is there and um, also if you only want to make one bag on the last page of the pattern I give instructions on the yardage that you need for simply one bag. So three-fourths of a yard of your main fabric and a half a yard of your accent will get you um, one market bag. You're gonna have leftover fabric because we're not cutting up our width of the fabric to make a kit. We are um, full width of fabric when we do that. So you will have a little bit left over and put that to use as a pocket. Add a pocket to the outside of your bag, if you'd like, or the inside of the bag. Um, simply tuck it in to the top here and stitch it down when you're stitching down your the base of the fabric and um, you'll have a nice pocket inside that you can put your car keys in when you're going shopping um, or a notebook or a list of what you're supposed to be shopping for. Um, so that's what we can do with the extra fabric from the main piece of fabric. But um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and um, I'm really excited about the canvas. I really want to thank you all for your excitement as well and all the responses, all the downloads and all the questions. And we love helping you coordinate fabric. I mean, Bruce has been coming in here and pulling yardage to um, cut to, for orders. And so this gets emptier and emptier every time I turn around. Um, so thank you for that. And also one more shout out. We are looking for 
um, possibly producing waxed petite canvas. We're researching it now and I don't know how long that will take, but we are on it. We heard you. And we're also going to research uh, batiking a heavier canvas, a much heavier canvas. Um, you know, batiking requires the act of dyeing and stamping. And so the heavier the fabric, the more difficult it is. But we're going to try and we'll see what we can come up with. And we'll, we'll share all of those um, research results with you as we do that as well. So um, this has been kind of a fun Friday. Hopefully you, you stuck with till the end of this and check out our new video um, on our um, Annie backpack. And I just, it's been kind of a fun week working with the canvas. So our next canvas project if I didn't already say it earlier, is going to be our quilted tamarack. And I'm going to wait a little while to do that because I need to share the love with some of our other fabrics and um, share some of our rayon and jersey. I think jersey is next for a project. Just It's still cool weather up here in North Dakota, and so I just love the, the jersey knit when it is a little bit cooler out, and I'm wearing one today. So um, have a wonderful Friday. Like our video if you haven't already. Subscribe to our channel and share some comments below. We love hearing from you and um, check out all these fun little canvas projects and have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend and keep sewing, smiling, and sharing. Hi everyone, it's Diane with Sew Batik and today we are going to make a market bag and it's a simple canvas market bag that measures 13 and a half high by 14 and 3 fourths wide and the depth is six inches and we're using our 57 inch wide petite canvas and so two cuts of coordinating fabric i've used the phoenix twilight blue and our hand dyed twilight blue for this project you need three-fourths of a yard of both fabrics to make two market bags. And the bags will end up coordinating and their positions for the main bag and the handles and base just simply switch. You can also make one bag and have leftover fabric for pockets or another project. Um, just depends on how many market bags you'd like to make. But I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step of how to make the simple market bag. I've cut all of my pieces, so follow the layout. Actually, I'm going to step back. If you haven't already, definitely download the free PDF from our website. It is a free pattern and download it and follow the instructions as well as this tutorial to make your bag and it has all of the measurements and what we cut out for each one of the pieces in that pattern. So what we need is a main bag fabric, okay? So I have that piece cut here, and it is, the, of course, the width of the bag plus the double length of the bag, okay? Or the height of the bag. We also have our base and straps, and then two little small cuts of um, the coordinating fabric for binding. The first step is to make our straps. So what I like to do is simply fold the strap fabric in half with wrong sides together. We want to make a center crease. That crease And then we're going to fold each side into that center crease and press. And do this for both of the straps. Now, in the I have two straps. I should explain. I have two strap cuts here simply because of how I cut out my fabric. But in the pattern, it is one long strap piece that you can make 
and then cut in half to create your two straps or handles. You can call them handles. <laughs> I don't know why I call them straps all the time. Okay. And now we're working with canvas, so it's a really, really nice, stiff canvas. Okay, what we're going to do next is jump over to the sewing machine and stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around each of the four sides on both straps. straps. And they have their stitch lines all the way around an eighth of an inch from all four sides. I'm just going to set this aside until we need it later on. Next, we want to work with the base of the bag and we're going to add it, stitch it to the center of our main fabric. Okay, we need our iron and ironing board. And one thing that I really do love to use, and it is in the pattern, I mentioned it in the pattern, is this hot ruler. I am not so bad at judging a half an inch or so um, when I have to press. But I have to say that this comes in handy. And if you're not familiar with it, it is a Clover product. There might be more out there, but it, it has all the measurements and markings for two and a half inches by seven inches. And I just lay it down on my fabric and I kind of estimate where my half an inch is because what we're going to do is press a half an inch along both long edges with our iron here. That is going to give us a nice seal to the edge of the base of the bag. So you flip it over on top of this hot ruler and measure accurately as you press. It's just a great little tool. And of course, over time, you become very familiar with what a half an inch looks like when you flip it up, um, but keeps your fingers out of the way and makes a really nice, even press. Okay, flip this over, do the same half an inch on this side. I really like how crisp the canvas presses when you're pressing with it and working with it. And then lightly go over the top of your other fold as well. Okay, now fold this in half. We want to find the center. It should be six and a half inches. And I'm gonna lightly press this. And take my ruler just to make sure it's, yep, six and a half inches. Now on the right side or face of the fabric, follow this, I'm gonna get a larger ruler, follow that press line with the fabric pencil. This will be a stitch line when we sew the base to our main fabric. I just need a light line here to follow when I stitch. There we go. I'm gonna set this aside for one moment. Now our main fabric here measures 22 by 38. I'm just going to quickly press this a little bit. It has some crease marks in it. And it's folded right now with the top edge touching, okay? And I have this with, and you have to decide, you know, when it comes to a batik um, in general, you have to decide which side of the fabric 
you like the best because both sides are stamped or hand dyed quite evenly. And um, that's often a question that we get is, well, which side is the right side? Um, with the batik, you kind of have to say which side is your preferred side and mark it every time you cut out a piece to know which one it is. But you can't get them wrong. If one happens to be a, on the other side, whether it be the right side or the wrong side, your choice, um, they are not very different and you typically can't tell. Okay, so now we have a press mark in the center of our main bag. I'm going to take two pins to mark those points right there. And on the other side, I could open this up and draw a line, but the line in the middle won't do me any good because I'm not going to see it once I put the base on top of this fabric. Okay, so I'm going to move this aside and get rid of my pressing table. I need a little bit more flat space here. Let's open this up. Again, your preferred side out. And take your base fabric and lay it right on top of the main fabric. And you're lining up the center line that you drew on the, on the base fabric to the pin at the side and make sure that your edges line up just like that. Pin it or clip it. If you use Wonder Clips, that's fine. We're working with only two layers of fabric, so pins are just fine. Line that up. Make sure your edges of your fabric are lined up. And add a few pins along the way. And also, across your folded edge, pin it a little bit in. We're going to be doing some top stitching, so keep your pins out of the way so you don't have to move them when you're sitting at your sewing machine. We're going to top stitch. I want to make sure this is flat. There we go. A quarter inch away from each folded edge here and here and an eighth of an inch on the sides. So start stitching your quarter inch along the top, eighth of an inch down, quarter inch over, eighth of an inch up, go across the center so that we do have a stitch line running across the center of your bag. Let's go stitch. I have my uh, sewing machine stitch set to uh, 2.8, which is a little bit of a wider stitch. We're just gonna stitch around and finish down the center. Now I'm going to trim the threads, of course, and we're going to get rid of our pins. And the next step, we're going to just stay right here at the sewing machine because we're going to sew our side seams together. And this technique uses a French seam. So we're going to start by sewing our, oops, here's another pin, our wrong sides together. And we're gonna, let's see here, we have our top and base of the um, market bag. But one thing to really pay attention to, regardless of the top or the bottom, let's make sure our side seams or our sides match up. So we wanna have the bag looking really nice and put together. So 
either use a clip there or a pin and we don't want that to move at all. Now, it might not be level up front, up at the top, but that is just fine, okay? And pin, I'm gonna pin actually as I go. A couple pins here. Just to keep it in place. Okay, and then on the other side as well, match up our, our base, put a clip, and then pin as you go up to the top of the bag. And stitch with a quarter inch seam. and then we're gonna trim it. Oh, there we go. Okay, back to the sewing. And I'm gonna reduce my um, stitch width because I want it to be a little bit tighter. I kind of adjust mine when I have top stitching versus um, functional seam stitching. Okay, now we're going to go to the um, other station and we're going to trim this down to an eighth of an inch and turn it right sides inside and come back and stitch again. Okay, now we line up our long ruler along our seam line and trim this down to an eighth of an inch. The goal with French seams is always to tuck that raw edge of your seam inside so that nothing shows. So we're only trimming just a little bit off each edge. I do trim off just a snippet of this corner down here, but there is truly not much to cut off. Just to make sure that there's not a lot of bulk. And there typically isn't very much. Okay, let's turn this the other way. So the wrong sides are touching, or right sides are touching, I'm sorry. Now, I actually take the end of a ruler. This is a really, really great Ulfla ruler. And get a point at the end and also kind of drag it along the seam to punch out the seam a little bit. Because what we need to do is press this flat before we go back over to the sewing machine and um, stitch another quarter inch. Let's see. There we go. And you may have your favorite tool that you use. I just use whatever happens to be on my sewing station and um, this ruler works really, really well. Okay, now time to press. And open up that seam, get it as crisp as you can, and then we'll press that in place. Looks really good. Okay, and then the 
other side. Now, the other thing I did contemplate doing is to finish my side seams after I added the straps to the top. Um, so that is an option as well, because the French seam, once we pull down the top of the bag to, to stitch all the way around, it can get bulky. So that is the other option is to, and our next step will be to uh, work on the actual straps, but to do the strap setting first before finishing your side seam. So it can be done either way, but I will be right back after I stitch up my side seams. I've stitched each side of the bag. So now I have my French seams and we're starting to form our market bag. But the one thing that we have to do before we turn our bag right side out is we have to finish our corners. We wanna give this bag a base. And so put your hand inside the bag and lay down your bag, creating a point. I measure in, there's two ways to do this, but what I do is I try to make sure that my seam, let me move that so that you can see this, that my seam is right down the center, okay? Now, we could use your ruler and a pencil to mark three inches in from the point, okay? That's one way. Or I measure four inches from the point along both sides, flat sides, place a mark, and then I connect those two dots. And typically, it's almost right on that three inch mark, okay? So I have, I guess it was a little off, but anyway, I have my uh, line and I'm going to then stitch against that line Come back, we're gonna cut the point off a quarter inch outside that line, and we'll have our, our opening here ready for some binding. So I'm gonna mark the other side, jump over to the sewing machine, I'm gonna keep that flat. Now the one thing I do too, which is worth mentioning, is I like to keep the seam in the center, um, pushing towards me so that when the sewing machine hits it, it's uh, stitching over it, not against it. Mark four inches and connect our lines. Okay. Time to stitch. As you can see, I cut off the edge of our bag, the point at the bottom of the bag, and now it's time to bind this. We, again, don't want any um, loose edges. And what I've done is I've taken my binding strip and center this binding. Let me grab a couple of clips here. Along the edge, because we want a little bit of fabric on each side hanging over. So I'm going to clip this. <clears throat> and then stitch with a quarter inch seam. other side we want to pull this along pull this across and fold it Oop, these ends are just a little bit long I'm gonna trim those up just a little bit to reduce the bulk in the binding now pull your binding in on each end 
and then we're going to fold it down and down again and clip that in place. There's two things we can do. We could um, widen the binding to an inch and a quarter, giving ourselves just a little bit more space to work with on this binding or press down one edge, one long edge of the binding, a, an eighth of an inch. That'll help us roll this around to the other side without any fussy work, okay? And it might give us a really nice clean edge to the binding as well, without having to use so many clips to keep the edge of the binding inside. And then just stitch right along the fold. Again, I always backstitch. And these are nicely bound. There we are. Okay. The binding is all done on the bottom of our bag. And the next thing we need to do before we turn it right sides out right side out is we need to press all the way around the top a quarter of an inch and then a half an inch and let's get that going again definitely use this um, hot ruler to get yourself going at least and that's what I typically use it for is to get a get a good press get it started, and then I can kind of judge how far away from the edge to make the rest of it, okay? So all the way around, okay, and then one more, half an inch, here, I have that pretty good. Okay. Now it's time to turn the bag right side out. And we're going to add the straps. Okay. Okay, push your corners out. And isn't it nice how everything's lining up nicely? It looks so good. Okay. There we go. Okay, now. Center your bag. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit. Now, what I really like about this bag style and design is that, well, first of all, we need to unfold what we just pressed. The lines will remain, but for measuring purposes, I want to make sure that we unfold our top edge and we're gonna do some measuring. Let's take our short ruler and we're gonna measure over five and a half inches from each edge and that's going to be where we put our strap. And just make a little mark so you can see where to line up the edge of your strap. So five and a half inches in from each side of the bag. Okay. Now, if you want to, you can definitely do all the measuring before you fold it down. I just like doing it before I flip the bag right side out. Now, I'm going to measure and place a mark 
right next to the five and a half inch mark, um, two inches down, and two and a half. Right in the center, two inches down and two and a half. and along each edge. Make sure that you have unfolded that top edge. Two and two and a half. And we're gonna do this on both sides. Okay, there's my five and a half. Five and a half and two, two and a half. Okay. Now, let's grab our straps. And the straps, of course, are on each individual side. So place your strap to the inside of that mark, five and a half, inside that marking, and then the end of it lined up to the two inch mark. Okay, and pin that in place. And make sure that your strap is not curled in any way. And the same on this side and the opposite side. And then we're simply going to sew this as securely as we can. Um, what I like to do is simply stitch along the bottom of the handle here. And remember we actually stitched an eighth of an inch from each edge. So go ahead and stitch that in place. Stitch up one side about three stitches, three stitches, and then over and down and do that twice on each one of the handles and that will securely put these handles in place. Okay, the handles are on the bag. They're on the outside of the bag. And now what we need to do is create a fold all the way around the bag and lift that up over the bottom of the handle, okay? I find that if we're doing this after we put the handles on, of course, put your handles inside your bag and on your ironing surface, find your line your two and a half inch line and press, okay? And we're gonna press that all the way around the bag. I use, what I do is I set it on both of the front sides of the bag and then I open it up towards the side of the bag, the seam side of the bag and connect those markings, okay? However, it works for you. So now I can, here's my seam. I'll press that. Now don't press the two fold marks that you have already pressed from an earlier step, okay? Because we want those to remain pressed. We'll need those in a second, okay? So just this press mark here, two and a half inches down from the top. Okay. And now just to make sure we're working on the outside of the bag, the right side of the bag. Okay, now what we wanna do, we've got our fold. Let's pull these straps back out. and grab some pins and we're going to take this fold 
it's just popping out at you anyway and fold it on top of the strap so basically that half inch between the strap end and the fold is what we're lifting up over the strap so you don't see the stitching that you just added to the bag and we're going to do this all the way around let me go the other direction first so i get my straps done two inches up pin right along that strap And you can probably tell that I still have my um, strap pinned up here at the top. I left that there because I want to keep this strap straight. And then on this side, fold it up and pin. And one more time. Okay, now you can add pins all the way along. Actually, I'm just going to do it this way. And I'll remove the pins as I sew. Okay, now pulling gently. You have your half inch mark there on the side. And just make that as even as you can. And what we're going to do now is top stitch all the way around the bag, following the edge of the fold. And it will just secure the strap even more inside that little, um, inside the fold mark right there. So we're only going to go across it once. And if you want to press again all the way across using the um, hot ruler to make sure that you're only folding it up a half an inch, go ahead and do that because that actually is a great way to make sure that you've placed the fold in the right place. And as a matter of fact, I'll do that right here. So if I take this ruler, set it between my handles right along the seam, I think this is right in the way, <laughs> and Put that right down there i have my half inch mark and i want to make sure that that comes up no more than a half an inch and then i'm going to pin right on that just a great way you can use this ruler for so many different things now is it too far there okay right there Okay, I'm going to the sewing machine. I'm going to top stitch all the way around an eighth of an inch from that fold. Now it's time to sew down the top edge. So let's take, actually I'm gonna take these pins out and fold back down onto itself and put a pin back in there just to hold it in place. You see how everything is just flattening back down onto itself and keep that strap as straight as possible. And you can add pins in between here too, if you'd like just to keep everything flat and straight.
Now, I'm going to, on the wrong side, I'm going to stitch right along the fold, the bottom fold, and then on the top, on the right side, I'm going to stitch right along the top edge. Flip this around to the right side and again top stitch just slightly an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch whatever you feel like doing right at the edge of the fold We are done. We have our market bag. How fun is this bag? <laughs>